Hey folks, how's it going? We just had a pretty fun two days of the Grand Blue Fest livestream and it looks like 2023 will be the year of Grand Blue. First off, after a year of silence, they finally showed a new trailer for Relink, just to confirm to everyone it didn't turn out into vaporware. I was particularly surprised by the way the textures maintained their hand-drawn feel of the base game and just bring in two 3D models, but the environments, the character models and best of all, the attack animations and spell effects are really making the 5 years wait worth it. Naru showing up to just let that katana rip as she flips all over was the cherry on top. The large AOE of the attack kind of reminds me of the Dynasty Warriors series and I really hope they can deliver a fun action RPG. The release date is set for 2023, but they didn't let us know which quarter. If it was planned for a summer release, I think they would have mentioned it, so I'm afraid it'll come out towards the end of the year. Still, really hyped to try it out. The second big announcement was for Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which is getting a re-release under the name of GBS vs Rising. They will finally add rollback netcode and crossplay, two big features loudly requested ever since its release. From there, they will keep adding new season passes for characters, stages and what have you. I might not be a Phylum fan, but I'm glad to see them listening to criticism and trying to get back on their feet. The release date is, again, 2023, likely around March or April, since the old game will receive its last update on January 24th. After some V8 shenanigans, it was time for the first wave of news. This opened with a Grand Luo finally being released to almost close the circle on the dragons, as well as a Fidil summon, while the Kala 5 star uncap will come out on February 5th. February will also see an old Bond rerun and this news becomes important later, while the next two events to join the side stories are Dancing Avengers and Spaghetti Syndrome. Sadly, a bit late for Guild War, we will finally have a 5 proving grand rerun, with the 5 star uncap for the Ocean Goal as well as a new weapon. Following that, we'll have another Rest of the Beast rerun and this will come with one of the best skins yet. I absolutely love the coat and the small glasses. I'll try to get this as soon as possible, even if I know it will be like 5 hours of suffering. The story event for February will see Ciro, Cartera and Orchid working to create a cute mascot, so... SSR Cartera soon? While well, we get there, on January 25th, a nice list of 27 characters is about to get their new EMP support skill, and there's quite a few high rankers in there. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Summer Kumbira, Grand Armea and Lich, but even a small new passive is going to be welcome for characters like Nehan, Poseidon and Summer Shalem. On the same date, they will finally release the character song outfits for Nier and Dikala if you've bought the CD, while a few more characters are about to get a new EX pose based on their Grand Blue Fest art from MC to four of the six dragons, as well as Percival, Lancelot, Cagliostro, Narmaya, Uni and Sidala. The update will also see the release of a new tier 5 class, the Mana Diver, a combination of Warlock and Chaos Ruler. It will be a Staff Dagger class with Crest mechanics and team white buffs upon charge bar consumption. The best part of this is going to be a new equipable summon called Mana Berries. Much like Paladin Shields, these will be dropped from specific raids and they will consume some charge bar from NC to cast their own skill, while also providing a passive effect. From simple attack and defense buff to echoes and debuffs or straight up damage, often depending on how many crests MC has. These look absolutely adorable, especially that mini Iggy and Leviathan. Can't wait to get them. Now, tier 5 classes are cool and all, but apparently Sega Games doesn't want to let the tier 4 ones die out, which is why they're releasing a second set of upgrades to add to the mastery levels. This will take some materials to be leveled up and the preview shows some bonus HP, multi-attack and a new passive skill for Berserker. They might be pretty cool, especially for tier 4 and EX2 classes that are still widespread like Kango, Relic Buster and Robin Hood, but they're going to have to release some pretty busted skill to let something like Berserker compete with Viking. The next one is a special 300 Ross Gacha you can buy with MOBA coins. It's something meant for new players, but it will be available to everyone once it comes out for the first time. It will be 4,500 MOBA coins for 300 draws, around 40 euros for a Flash or Gala Spark that if you want to throw your wallet at, would normally cost somewhere in the 700s. It's one of those deals that's a bit too good to pass on, so do me a favor and please turn off the ad block. Also remember to like, comment, subscribe and share. 
the last news for day one were a new Grimnir single, a new soundtrack album and some more merch. Day 2 opened with the live concert and more VA minigames, before leading straight into a rapid-fire section for the upcoming content. First off, Valentine Sandalfon almost gave poor Mao a heart attack. I was never a fan of the brooding teenager, but I must admit it's kind of sad to see the Supreme Primarch being relegated to a coffee machine. I know he's not really going to get character development in his Valentine fates, but still, the next time he shows up, it would be nice if he didn't just stand there making coffee. The second Valentine slot this year is going to go to Sen. I don't know which fashion designer suggested the pants on head, but the would be cat looks as cute as ever. My hopes for a new Razia alt dwindle ever so slightly. Now, Valentine skins are going to be a thing apparently, and the first one to get one is Wilness. I don't know what was going on through people's heads when they decided to go with the naked apron, or, well, I can imagine, but it wouldn't be family friendly. Still, 10 out of 10 skin, I've been laughing my ass off ever since it was shown. Next up, always on the January 25th update, is the new Diaspora tier raid. Agastya rises again from the Rubom event and brings a new Dark Staff with the usual awakenings. Hopefully it will be a fun fight even though I'm afraid that what it will have to stop the Halloween Florence cheese. Always on the 25th, more shields for Paladin from Rose Queen, Alexio, Enneads, One Long and Killin. while 5 days later, on the 30th, we will finally see the release of the My Room feature. It looks to be fully cosmetic and it will just have some characters to roam in it, you can tap to make them play some sound or animation. Later this year, in spring, we should be getting the Auto Arcarum Expedition feature, where you can send a team of characters on an expedition and they'll bring some mats back to you every X hours. It surely won't beat farming, but more mats are always nice. With the anniversary in March, we will also get a new tier 4 class, the Yamato, for which they've only shown an early draft. They're also planning to turn the Xeno fights into permanent quests and replace the relevant event rerun with a new X series of bosses. Next are a new set of stones that will give buffs to your team in specific content. The one shown improves your damage against fire enemies in the Tower of Babel. It looks like they will level up by gaining experience from certain quests too. The anniversary will also see the usual rank cap increase from 325 to 350, as well as the Games Journalist mode for the Burial Raid. On better news, the six dragon summons are about to get a 4 star uncap, and Lucifer is listed as the next transcendent summon to be uncapped to 250. Both Lucifer and Bahamut will also get home pain privileges. Moving on, Full Auto is about to get a bit of a quality of life update, as we'll be able to pick and choose which skills to let our characters use. It will be extremely useful for short burst content, where all you really need are a couple of button presses. On top of that, they will also add the quick summon to the full auto list. And speaking of short burst content, Arcarum is also about to get its third area and the gateway to a new world, unlocking the 13th weapon grid slot and opening the way to farming the materials required for the Evoker 5 star uncaps. They've also reminded us which order they're coming out in, and we finally got to see the new art for Maria Theresa and Kame. Looks like we'll have a month and a half to finish preparing and in the meantime, starting from February 1st, we will have the special collab fever campaign, with the usual half cost event, campaign quest and free daily draw. This is where some of the old collabs will reopen at once and we should be getting the 5 star uncaps for Joker, Liluch and Cardcaptor Sakura. The stream concluded with the news that the Extra Fest will be held on the 5th and 6th of August. Then we were left with another section of cosplayers and the teaser for the next anniversary event. The rerun of Old Bond was a pretty big hint towards the 9th anniversary revolving around the 6 dragons, and with them Shinsha, Orologia and a weirdly evil looking Sierra. Hopefully they won't pull another bait and switch on us and actually deliver another event that can stand on the same ground as the 7th anniversary one. Alright then, that's going to be it for me for the moment. Let me know which updates you're looking forward the most down in the comments and as always, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Ciao!